blessings upon blessings. This is J.U. Nuts from Richmond, VA. Please stay tuned for season seven of Let's Talk, Talk to the Lord. Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show, created and hosted by Apostle John E. Ross. And we are J.U. Trying to do what's right, but end up Lord, please give me another chance. Make me alone. I want you to have.
blessings and more grace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. I am your gospel radio apostle, Apostle John E. Roth, creator and host of this podcast, lead apostle and founder of the Omega International Prophetic Ministries, and thank you for tuning in for Season 7 of the Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. And Kingdom, our guest for this episode of Let's Talk to the Lord is sister duo Alicia and Whitney. Kingdom, Alicia and Whitney are worship leaders, songwriters, authors, and speakers who have a passion to connect others to Jesus through equipping them to cultivate a lifestyle of worship. Kingdom, they have two original albums entitled Core and A Portrait of Worship. Whitney has authored two books, Beauty for My Ashes and Occupy While Waiting. Alicia and Whitney, welcome to Let's Talk to the Lord. Thank you, Apostle Ross. We're honored to be here and uh, just appreciate all you do for the kingdom. Amen. And Alicia, please share your story of repentance when you began your journey with Christ Jesus. Yeah, you know, uh, our father was a pastor and our mom the worship leader, and we just grew up in church. And so I just... I don't remember really not knowing the Lord <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and just um, and growing up in that environment. And so i um, very fortunate to, to have known about the love of Jesus and, and know about his sacrifice and, for my life uh, from a very, very young age. And so um, I'm really grateful to have that as, as my foundation. So back to you. Amen. And Whitney, please share your story of repentance when you repented and began your journey with our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. I'd love to. Yeah, so we're sisters and and grew up in the same home. So our our story is is very similar in that grew up in a Christian home and just so grateful that we, you know, we're able to do that, and I know it's just a, such a blessing that from a young age we were able to be raised up just knowing him, and it's been, it's been great because it's, it's been a foundation that we've gone back to time and time again, and it really became our own, too, because I know sometimes when people, people are raised in that environment, they, they lean on their parents' relationship with the Lord or their churches, but because we've walked through difficult ex- experiences that I know we'll talk about later on in the show, um, just as we continued growing older, it, it just became more and more of, of our own. And um, I just remember anything that, that I knew that I could do that would draw me closer to God, I was just excited <laughs> to do it. And I just love it. And I've, I've grown so much in the Lord over the years. I'm so excited for what's to come as well. So back to you, Apostle Ross. Amen. Alicia, please announce our topic, begin our discussion, and let's go to the Word of God. Yes, our topic tonight is how God brings beauty from ashes and how God can birth difficult, uh, God can birth things through difficult times. And um, that's been true in our, our own testimony. Uh, we lost our dad to cancer um, when we both were in our, our early 20s, and he was 52 years old. And, um, and just through that tragedy, the Lord used it to really draw us closer to him. And Scripture says he's near to the brokenhearted, and we really found that to be true. And, and we just went from, from two girls who grew up in church and just knew God and loved God and and, and, and had a relationship with him, but it, it really um, took it to a whole other level when we were walking through that grieving process. And we were leaning on God as our heavenly father <laughs> because our earthly father was no longer with us like never before. Yeah. And I just I want to encourage those that maybe feel like they're just going through difficult times, whether it's grief or a divorce or, um, you know, sickness and loss. There's so many difficult trials that, that people are walking through right now is that God never wastes anything. 
And what, what the enemy meant for evil, God can work it out for our good. And if you keep your, your mind and your focus and your worship and your devotion just set on him and set, keep your eyes on the Father and, and just who he is and his love for you, you're going to see his hand in everything in your life, even the difficult things. We know that he doesn't cause them, but he does, he does turn them around and, and, and work them for our good. And that, that's really our, our testimony because it was during that grieving time that we began writing songs and, and we began to, to worship because worship was a lifeline for us at that point. It was a connection point to God. And, um, and through that we began writing songs and, and, and we just discovered what, what a tool the Lord has given us through worship as his people that we can, we can experience his presence, his Holy spirit. And, um, and there's comfort there. And, and so beauty for my ashes and the Lord that that he talks about in Isaiah, that the Lord will give you beauty for your ashes and, and joy for your mourning. That's really um, the topic that we're talking about tonight, but it, it, we lived it out. And, and you can't deny when, when you have a testimony that um, people can say, well, God doesn't do that anymore, or God's distant, or he, he's this or he's that. But when you have a testimony and you've walked through it and seen it firsthand, no one can tell you otherwise. And so we're just here wanting to encourage your listeners that, that may be walking through those difficult times that don't give up, don't discount this season, don't see it as a waste or that, you know, you're, you'll never get out of it because it won't last. Joy comes in the morning and God really has a purpose and plan for your life. And it's not just to get you out of the situation that you're in, but it's also to bring others out. Once you're healed, God wants you to go bring those broken people that, that are coming out of the situations that you're coming out of to um, just to help them, to be, to be that lantern that helps light their way um, because of Christ in you. And, um, you know, that's what our ministry is. We, from that place of brokenness, um, you know, it's been almost 10 years now, but we've traveled, we've recorded two albums, and we've just had this passion within us to equip people in worship, to know that you can run to the Father, know that, that there is a dwelling place in him, that no matter what you're going through in life's circumstances, that there's a safe harbor in the presence of Jesus. And, um, and so that's really been our passion between whether it's the music we write where we lead worship, our podcast, or um, the books we write, whatever it is, is we just want to create that atmosphere and help people find that connection point to the Father. And so that's, that's my encouragement is don't give up and uh, just believe that the Lord is working this out for your good. Back to you, Apostle Ross. Amen. Amen and amen again. Sister Whitney, please continue our discussion. Yeah, for those who follow our ministry and and those who might check us out after the show, you'll notice that beauty for my ashes is a huge theme with our ministry and, of course, what Alicia's talked about. And really it began around uh, about 10 or 12 years ago. I was a teenager and uh, my dad and I were visiting this church, and after the service, we just left because everybody was talking and the pastor was busy, so we just left, and I, I'd never been to this church before, and just to kind of set the, set the scene for you, we uh, grew up in a Christian home, but then our parents divorced when we were about 10 and 12 years old, and so just kind of walking out, you know, being from a, a broken home and, and with parents and ministry and stuff, all that can be messy and it's hard to navigate when, when you're young. And so uh, as we're leaving church, the pastor runs out and chases us down and he just says, hey, I just see the anointing of God on your life. Can I pray for you? And so I was like, sure. And so he starts praying for me and really just starts just prophesying, just speaking what the Lord was speaking over me. And it was a really transformational time. And at that point, he said that God wants to give you 
beauty for your ashes so that you can in turn give others beauty for theirs. And as a you know, 16, 15, 16 year old, I had no idea really what that meant or what that would look like. But I just kind of kept it tucked away because I knew it was something important. So fast forward uh, to, to being 20 years old and dad passing away. And I just remember being at the head of his bed as he took his last breath and just everything that I thought life would be, everything that I had planned had just crumbled as he took his last breath. And I just thought, you know, God, what, what good could come out of this? Like, I don't understand. You say you work all things out for her good, but I don't know how anything good can come from this situation. But I had enough history with God. Like I said, I'd had that foundation with him, and I'd walked through some things, through some difficult times. That I, I knew God's character, and I knew how he had come come through for me before and that he could do it again. And so I had, I had a, it was a little bit of trust, but that's all you need. You just need that little flame or that little spark. And I said, I don't know how anything good could come from this, but if anything could, you could do it, Lord. And so I'm willing to do whatever it is, um, you know, that you want to do in this situation. And a big verse for us during that time was um, in John 12, and it's where Jesus is talking about um, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground um, and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And so really from that experience, we began to see these difficult times and, and these tragedies and these devastations as really their seeds in the ground. And what looks like death to the world and what looks like death to the natural eye is really just the seed being planted into the ground. And it's been an amazing experience as we've been in ministry um, since about 2014, 2015, just what God has birthed as we've said yes to him and as we've been willing to trust him that even though I'm hurting and I'm broken and this is not how I wanted my life to go, I'm going to trust that you're molding and shaping this and working it out for my good and for your glory. And through that, he's, um, you know, like you said, we've, um, written two original albums. We're actually getting ready to record our third. We lead worship uh, all around the country, have done missions work in Tanzania and uh, Honduras, and actually um, a portion of all the money we make for, for our music, uh, we donate it to our nonprofit, and we support kids in uh, Kenya and India right now, as well as local um, kids in foster care systems. So uh, really... I guess my encouragement would be to those listening that you may be in a situation or in the future you, you know, may come upon a situation where you don't know how anything good can come from that situation. But I want you right now just to picture what you're going through as a seed in the ground and that uh, unless, it, unless it goes into the ground, it remains only one seed. But if you plant it and allow the Lord to water it and to nurture it and to grow it, it can become many seeds that not only blesses your life, but blesses the life of everyone around you and maybe even people that you'll never get to meet. Apostle Ross, like your, your station's going out to people that you'll never get to personally meet or shake their hand or give them a hug. But uh, what you're doing, your broadcast is going out and it's becoming uh, a, a huge harvest for the kingdom. So back to you, Apostle Ross. Amen, amen, and amen again. Kingdom, our topic of discussion for this episode in Season 7 is God brings beauty from ashes and how God can birth things through difficult times. Kingdom, to begin, when I research the entomology of ashes, ashes are the powdery remains of a fire. Interestingly, what comes to mind in a spiritual sense, I had working, I had a spiritual experience while I was working. I was on a post at a recycling business, and it was a dirty place. And when I went there, I wore old shoes and jeans because the time, by the time I'd leave, I would be covered in ashes. This was at the beginning of my rebirth. And I didn't complain about the dirty place. I had to work. But interestingly, as I was working, I learned from their fire pits that not only wood turns to ashes, but everything or anything that catches fire will turn to ashes. 
the kingdom while I was working. I had my worship music playing, and I had my Bible, and I began to worship instead of complaining. And to my surprise, I saw a very beautiful white light shining like diamonds on the outside of one of the buildings where I was working. And I saw this while in a dirty, dusty place but was a little confused but happy to see God was with me. But on the inside, I was disappointed because I thought at first that that's where God wanted me to be. And I preferred not to have to work in a dirty, smelly place. However, the Lord revealed to me that was not what God wanted for me. But because because instead of having a bad attitude, I gave God worship, and soon afterwards, other opportunities opened for me, praise God. So kingdom fire is also a purifier. Kingdom God will give us beauty for ashes in painful situations. As they read earlier from Isaiah, the 61st chapter, and the third verse, and the third verse declares it provide for those who grieve in Zion with a long dash after Zion. Kingdom, a long dash behind a word in the Bible means a dramatic change took place. Now back to the verse, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and the garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Kingdom Christ is our joy given, and our oil of gladness comes from Christ. Understand, even in the circumstances, even if the circumstances may remain the same, but we change the glass we look through. God gives us sources of joy to get us through every trial and tribulation in this life, because it all contributes to our end, which will be eternity in heaven. Heaven is immaculate. There are no words to describe heaven's beauty, but beauty is also a state of being. Pleasing to the senses, it's goodness and God's courtesy in the right way. Beauty means to make blessed again. The fire is acting as a purifier, and First Peter, the apostle, declares what matters is not your outer appearance, meaning the styling of your hair, the jewelry you wear, or the cut of your clothes, but it's the inner beauty, and the gentle is pleasing and is what God takes delight in. Spiritually speaking, beauty is the expression of qualities of God in ourselves and others. These qualities are joy, love, grace, gentleness, and unselfishness. God is the source of these qualities. That's the source of the beauty God is seeking. 1 Peter 3 and 4 declares, But let inward adorning and beauty of the hidden person of the heart with incorruptible and unfading charm of a gentle and peaceful spirit, which is not anxious or wrought up, but is very precious in the sight of God. This process is compared to a birthing. Birthing is the act of bringing forth to carry, to bear children, of which the Bible says in Matthew, the 18th chapter, and the third verse declares, and he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven, meaning being teachable, meek, and humble. Kingdom birthing is coming into existence. What's coming into existence is a new me, a new you, and a new lineage is being birthed through the pain. And what Christ is bringing the beauty of a new you to a new life and the mortal to immortality. Death in itself is a birthing from this world to the next. A lot of times the outer being can be suffering, but because of Christ, we are birthed into a divine, beautiful, angelic, and supernatural being. Alicia, please 
give the final words on our topic of discussion, God brings beauty from ashes and how God can birth things through difficult times. Yes, I love those descriptions that you gave, even just, um, you know, being in the fire, the refiner's fire, and that that sometimes God God uses that to, to make us more like him and to get rid of the things that, that don't belong in, in our internal life anymore. And, and I think that's, um, that's a process that we all go through. And sometimes hardships escalate that process and, 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 and make, it, make it happen a lot sooner than we would um, any other time in life. But I just want to, you know, encourage listeners that, that you're in good hands with the Father and that um, even if he's asking you to lay some things aside and, and maybe throw, throw some things in, in, that, in that refiner's fire that, that aren't suiting you anymore, that he always, um, he has a better exchange rate than we do. <laughs> when we give him ashes, he gives us beauty. When we give him mourning, he gives us joy and, uh, and that garment of praise. And so don't be afraid to take the broken pieces of what you're holding in your life and, and, and be willing to exchange and, and lay it at the Father's feet because um, he's, he's always <laughs> the, he's the giver, uh, the best giver among givers because um, he always gives back way more than we could ever give him. So back to you, Apostle Ross. Amen, amen, and amen again. Whitney, please introduce Alicia and Whitney to the kingdom. Yes, well, we are Alicia and Whitney. Like we said earlier, we're sister singing duo, worship leaders, author speakers, and podcasters as well. So we do a lot of things. It's it's been a blessing that God's allowed us to kind of get into a lot of different streams. So first and foremost, I would just say, if you'd like to learn more about us, you can go to our website. You're going to find everything there. It's www.aliciaandwhitney.com. And from there, you can, uh, you know, purchase physical copies of our albums as well as digital downloads. You can find my books there. And Alicia actually released a book as well called Reset, Recalibrate, and Restore. And uh, so, yeah, anything that we're doing, you can definitely find from that, that place. Uh, but we're also on social media. So you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you just look up at Alicia and Whitney. And so we, uh, we're pretty active on there. And so if we're going to be singing places or, uh, you know, leading worship or like our new music that's coming out, we'll definitely keep everyone informed from those platforms. And we uh, are on YouTube at Alicia and Whitney. And every Thursday night, if you check out our Facebook and our YouTube channel, we do a live uh, prayer and worship time called The Dwelling Place. So we start off with one song that everybody may know, and then from there we just let Holy Spirit take over, and uh, just songs of the Spirit come, and we people put in their prayer requests, and we pray for them. So it's definitely a powerful time. And again, that's Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central on Facebook and YouTube. And then, um, yeah, you can stream our music from any platform where you buy or stream music. So whether that's Spotify, uh, Google Music, Pandora, any of those things, uh, Apple Music, you can do it from there. And then also our podcast. So we have a podcast called Coming Up Higher that Alicia and I uh, co-host. And you can listen to that wherever you stream podcasts. And I have my own podcast called uh, Beauty of Becoming. And that is for single women pursuing Jesus, their purpose, and healthy relationships. So there's a, a lot of resources that we have out there. Um, and so we would love for you to just take advantage of those and also just love to connect with you. So back to you, Apostle Ross. Amen. And Whitney, please tell the kingdom about the music being featured during this podcast. We opened with All for Nothing, and we're getting ready to hear Chasing Me Down. Yes, these are two of our latest songs. Uh, So I mentioned that we're recording a third album uh, next month, actually. So these will be on our new album. And All for Nothing, the, the premise of that song is, Basically, that everything is for nothing unless it's all for Jesus. And I love that because just about a month ago, I was in my worship time, and, and I was worshiping, but my mind just kept drifting away, and I was thinking of, like, all the things that um, the Lord has us involved in and just, you know, the different places we go and lead worship and the stages and the 
cameras and all that stuff, my mind just kind of kept drifting, and Holy Spirit just kind of got on to me and just asked me, like, why, why do you think those are much more important than what you're doing right now? And he said, because what you're doing right now, sitting at my feet, is actually what empowers you to go do those other things. And that's what brings the anointing, and that's what breaks the yoke, is because of, of you um, spending time with me right now, just you and me on your living room floor. And so that's, that's the premise of the song, is that literally like anything that we could do, um, any relationship, any success, any achievement, anything is literally nothing unless Jesus is in the center of it because he's, he's the eternal. He's what's lasting. He's what's important. At the end of the day, he's always going to be there. He's our foundation. So um, that is why uh, that song was written. And Chasing Me Down is just a fun one, and it's actually uh, we did a remix of it featuring Resurrection, who you may know. He was at the, the Spin Awards with all of us. Man. But, um, yeah, it's just based off of the verse in Psalm 23, that surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And it's a fun, upbeat song that just is a great reminder that uh, although, like we've been talking about, all the difficult things and the hard times that we've gone through, never forget that his goodness and his mercy is always chasing you down. And it's his goodness that leads us to repentance. So, uh, never forget that he's a good God. He gives us good gifts. And he, um, you know, like Jeremiah says, he has a hope and a future for us. He has plans to prosper us and not to harm us. So um, we hope that you're encouraged as you listen to uh, this next song, Chasing Me Down. Amen. Back to you, Papa Amen. And Kingdom, the music of Alicia and Whitney are in rotation on Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International. Kingdom, Let's Talk to the Lord can be heard on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Alexa, and YouTube. You may download episodes from speaker.com found under Let's Talk to the Lord. We are live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time from KingdomInfluencersBroadcast.com and 11 a.m. every Saturday from SensationalSoundsRadio.net. Please write to us at Let's Talk to the Lord at Yahoo.com. Please follow us on Twitter at Ross Apostle. Please visit our website, Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International. Please download our app on your Play Store for your cell phones under Let's Talk to the Lord Radio. You can now ask Alexa to play Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International and Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. Kingdom, we are now on Roku. To find us on Roku, please search the MyTuner radio app on your Roku, and then search Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Station. And if you would like to listen to the podcast on your Roku channel, on your Roku TV, just go to iHeartRadio. Once you find the iHeartRadio app, then put in Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show, and you can listen to every episode right there on Roku. Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International is your 24-hour station for talk news radio interviews, and Christian music. On Amazon, order our book, Spiritual Guidance Through Alzheimer's Disease, with author Kimberly V. Porter. All of my music are available on Amazon and all digital stores and all digital outlets. Lord, give me another chance, featuring Sean E. Scales and Tamara Lloyd, and remember now thy creator, featuring King David the Vessel, a new duo and doctor, and is also available under the name Minister John E. Ross. So kingdom, un. Until next time, may God bless you, and may God keep you living your lives at the foot of the cross under a open heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.
just keep on running So why would I just keep on running Running in search of Something that's been right in front of uh -huh. Me all the time yeah. Never knew a love like this When I step away, I get love sick Makes you repent, run back quick Quick to forgive, you die for it Your mercy, your grace, your love Just wait when I fall Alicia went and Rev got chased down by the one He filled our hearts, first he laid us down on the cross no.